Let's talk about classroom management. Consider these suggestions and not mandates. Some seating arrangements are more conducive to a communicative class and help make the class feel more like a community. I tell students from the first day to move up if there's an empty seat in front of them. If the room is big enough, then I'll rearrange seats into two or three semicircles before class starts, and the students eventually start helping you out with that setup. And I tell students the first day that they show me that they're listening with their eyes. This is also my expectation that they keep their eyes on me or towards the speaker if they are to earn full points for daily participation. Go over your class rules the first day and again the next and whenever the class needs refreshing. These are rules I've adapted from other teachers. I count the rules on the fingers of my hand. So one, I want the students trying to understand everything. Again, they show me they're trying by keeping their eyes on the speaker. Two, the students and the teacher will limit their English, they'll attempt to, limiting it to two words at a time or two seconds at a time. Three, I want students trying to answer everything, responding to everything they can. And I ask a lot of whole class questions, which I, they all answer together, like yes or no, either or questions. And in, the, in those cases, I expect the whole class, everyone to be answering. Rule four, I want them to signal to let me know when they don't understand. I tell students to interrupt me if they can't understand me and that this actually shows me that they care and that they wanna know what I'm saying. I try to encourage it by having students briefly clap for the person requesting clarification, but they generally don't want to admit in front of their peers uh, that they don't understand. Actually, I know I've built good rapport with the class if they do feel comfortable shouting out and admitting they don't understand. But another way to encourage the signaling that is more anonymous is to ask them to stomp. When they stomp, it doesn't matter. You don't, might not even see who did it, but that doesn't matter. You just stop whatever you just said, go back, say it again, paraphrase it, repeat it, do what you need to do to help them understand what you were just saying. Um, you can also say that the signal doesn't just mean you don't just use it when you don't understand, but also when you want the teacher to slow down. And students might feel more comfortable doing that, admitting that they, they want you to slow down rather than saying they don't understand. And then rule five, I want us to be supportive of each other. So whenever a student volunteers for something or tries to say just about anything in the second language in front of the class, we will briefly clap about two seconds, the whole class for that student or students. Giving students special roles during class all but guarantees that at least those students will be engaged. I reassign these two jobs at the start of every class. I buy these $1, can you see them? Clapper hands at a dollar store, and we celebrate everything students say in the second language. So this, the clapper kid will start the applause, everyone in the class joins in, lasts about two seconds. The English referee, uh, this job is to keep the teacher from using too much English. I start the semester allowing myself four seconds of English at a time. If I go over those four seconds at any one time, then a soft ball, gets thrown at me, shoulders and down. Um, it only ever gets used to, or thrown at the teacher, not at other students. And it often catches me off guard and the class gets a good laugh at my reaction. And it also, I get to re a reminder that I'm using English, go back to using Spanish. Um, if that makes you feel nervous, the idea of a student throwing a ball at you, you can come up with, I'm sure, another way uh, for someone to referee your English. There are more jobs we can use, but they're activity specific. To build rapport, start learning names early, making a serious effort by the second or third class, definitely once drop ad is passed. So study your photo rosters, but also you want the students to know each other's names. So you can go down the line, have students say their name, go work about five students in, then go back to the first and see if the class can recall what that student's name was. Then add the next five students, go back to the beginning until every student has said their name and the class is trying to recall what every student's name is in the class. Um, and you can do that two or three classes. Once you do know everyone's names, this saves you some time from having to call out their names to take attendance. Second, to build rapport, be communicative. What that means is respond to comprehensibility, not perfection. So if you don't understand the student, ask for clarification, but don't correct errors that don't affect compre your comprehension, and especially don't do it in front of the whole class. Third, 
If uh, you need a student or two or three to be redirected back on task, uh, rather than call out that student by name, see if you can make a reminder to the whole class. <laughs> um, so you say something like, I wanna remind you all that your cell phone should be put away. Maybe there's only one student who actually on their phone, but that way that student hears you and doesn't, he doesn't get their name called out in front of everyone. Um, uh, or say something like, I wanna remind you all that your eyes should be on the speaker. And that might be one student who's looking down or one student who's like dozing off and you're able to get them back on track without having to call them out. Next, humor is great for the classroom, but avoid making jokes at the expense of a student. And lastly, if a student is not participating or seems distracted or somehow seems off, then ask that student to hang around after class and talk with a student and you'll, you'll probably find that their behavior has nothing to do with you. Now this could be called the formula for engagement and participation. Classroom management largely takes care of itself if these three components are satisfied. Fortunately for us language teachers, this is essentially the formula for optimal language learning. Community gets built by students getting to know each other and through collaborative activities. A lack of comprehension is a major source of classroom management issues. And I could have said interesting instead of compelling, but the language teaching and learning professions love their C words, like actful five C's and the three C's of negotiating meaning. Uh, students actually don't need to be motivated to learn Spanish. They just need to be motivated to partake in the current activity. And they will be if they like the activity. There are particular activities and strategies that support these three components. And those are topics for other videos. That's all.